Ever feel like you get writer's block when it's time to do the property description? Well, today we're covering some simple strategies you can use to get over that block and write great property descriptions. Plus, we're giving away a download of our brainstorming cheat sheet that you can use to perfectly position your listings. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, Alex Camilio here, CEO of the Agent Inner Circle with AgentInnerCircle.com and thank you so much for joining today and taking time out of your day to come learn with us. So as you heard, today we are talking about property descriptions and the goal of any property description is to draw in the buyers that best fit the home, the folks that are going to uh pay the most money for it, do, in, do it in an expedient manner, um, truly the best fit and the perfect fit for that home. But all too often, I end up seeing property descriptions that end up looking like stat sheets. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through two main strategies. The first is we're actually going to start by outlining the three things that you need to keep in mind before writing your property description. And let me tell you, this is going to save you a ton of time in the long run, I promise. So you absolutely want to do this step uh, no matter what. We even have a download that goes along with this outlining process, but we'll get to that eventually. Um, before we get to the rest of it, though, I do want to mention if you are watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe and the notification bell uh, down below. We would greatly, greatly appreciate that. Um, pretty much anywhere else that you are watching this, if you could leave a like and a comment down below for us as well, it is hugely helpful with the algorithms um, as well as I would personally greatly appreciate it. Uh, awesome. All right. So we've covered that. We've done our housekeeping. Let's get into it today. So we talked about three considerations that you need to look into and prepare yourself for before writing the property descriptions. And these might seem pretty straightforward, but we're going to give you some tricks as to how to go about this and how to get the piece of information that you need. So number one, before it comes time to writing your property description, I want you to actually write down the property's unique benefits. And I'm not just talking about the basics, you know, right? the location, the neighborhood, the, the basics like that. I'm talking about you should actually take some time and talk to your seller about what the unique benefits of the home are, what they loved about the home. Ask them, what are you going to miss about this place when you leave? Maybe it's the restaurant down the street. Maybe it's the the you know beautiful air and breeze that they get at certain times of the day. It's hard to tell what those unique benefits are without having that conversation. And the download that we're giving away uh, in the blog that goes with this article is actually going to help with this whole process of outlining everything. So make sure you head over and get that uh, after you watch the video. So number one is to talk to the homeowners and that download is going to help you with some of the questions that you can ask them and help with the brainstorming process of coming up with what that property's specific unique benefits are. And like I said, it's not just the, the locale or the neighborhood or the schools or the, the basics, the stuff you can research online. What we're looking for here are the standout unique things that the seller is going to tell you about why they enjoy the home. So that's step number one is getting that piece of information available to you and ready for when it's time to do the property description. The next thing is that we want to think about the wants and needs of the potential buyer. Now, we all have an idea of who might be buying the home, what kind of things that they're into, right? If the home has a great space to entertain, then the people moving in there are probably going to like entertaining. You know, it's one of the benefits of the home. So you want to talk about all of the sort of needs of the potential buyer and what they might be looking into. Now, this can include the stuff I mentioned before, like location, neighborhood, affordability, commute, all of the basics, but you want to get a general idea of what sort of things buyers might be looking for in your market. And again, 
brainstorming those. We're getting those onto a piece of paper so that we can actually write the property description later. The third is using the right words. And what I mean here is property descriptions will do a lot better when the words that you're using match up to the audience that is reading them. And I don't mean uh, specific like what grade words or what things like that, but I more mean in the sense of if this home is great at entertaining, maybe it's a, a perfect place to throw parties with the pool and the pool bar and the whole nine, but you don't know anything about throwing parties. That's not your thing. You're not a big entertainer. Well, maybe it's time to go out and do some research about entertaining, about throwing a party, what it's, what's involved in it, what sort of language is used when people are entertaining like that, right? That those are really, really important things to do. So those three are really, really key, right? properties, unique values, and unique benefits, what the needs of the potential buyer are, and the right words that you're going to use to match up with that person. This brainstorming to begin with is going to give you the basis and the structure to then easily go create a property description from it. Now, I mentioned before uh, in the blog, and I will I will do my best to link the in the description down below, um, but we have a download that makes this entire brainstorming process super easy. Uh, it's free, and it's going to be on the blog. So feel free to head over and download that as well. Or if you are on the blog, just download that right down below. Now that you have your brainstorming cheat sheet and you have all the information that you need to uh, start off and start writing your property descriptions, I want to give you four steps to structure your copy because there are four things that we always say to keep in mind um, when it's time to actually go and sit down and write that property description. So number one is to tell a story. And, you know, the basics of getting down the stat sheet stuff is fine, but you want to make sure that you are in some way painting the picture of whatever that buyer's desire is in their head and matching that up to the home. Now, I want to give you an example here of sort of a before and after about what I mean when it comes to storytelling. So before example here, uh, five bed, four bath home with view and room to entertain. Super straightforward, might as well be a stat sheet, right? We're just listing the things off on a checklist. After, however, when we say, all right, it's time to tell a story, it can turn into something more like this. Spend evenings entertaining your friends over a city view in this five bed, four bath, right? Continues on. So now you've started a story. You've gotten to the point where people are uh, envisioning themselves in that position, matching up with those desires, those things that they want out of that home. And the better job that you can do to tell a story, the better job you're doing of making sure that the buyers are interacting with it and picturing themselves in that location to some level so that when they show up there, they're envisioning them. They've already envisioned themselves there. They've already put themselves in that home for whatever qualities match up to their perfect desires. So after you've told a story, now it's time to appeal to the senses. So beyond just somebody being able to put themselves in that home, right, and envision themselves in that home, we go a step further and we want to appeal specifically to the senses. Um, we talked about this actually last week uh, in a blog and in an article, um, in a video, but appealing to emotion and to the senses draws a stronger connection psychologically to whatever it is that you're reading. So what we want to do here is, um, again, give you some examples of a before and after that may or may not appeal to the senses. So uh, the before could be something like a backyard with beautiful rose bushes. Right? You've sort of painted the picture. You've told them, but it's very stat sheet-esque. But let's take a look at the after. Okay, the after would be enjoy the vibrant scent of fresh roses in your own backyard. Enjoy the vibrant scent of fresh roses right in your own backyard. So it it allows you to picture not only picture yourself and envision yourself and put yourself in that position, but you can get a sense 
of what it's going to be like to live there, and you've appealed to some sort of either smell, taste, whatever it might be, a sense um, when it comes to writing that property description. So that is another key takeaway and great thing that you absolutely want to do is you do your best to appeal to the senses whenever you can. The next one here is to use impact words that appeal to emotion. So again, we talked about this uh, in last week's blog and last week's video, um, but you want to make sure that you're using impact words that appeal to the emotional centers of the brain because it draws a closer psychological tie. So again, this is a, this is a simple one, but I want to give you a before and after once again. This is like changing something from charming to warm. So charming, first of all, I tend to think charming is a little overused uh, in a lot of property descriptions and a lot of content out there. But beyond that, you're not drawing a specific emotion out when you're talking about charming. However you are when you're talking about warm, right? Warmth gives that um, very uh, essence or uh, feeling about you. You know what that is and what to expect from it. Uh, charming has a much wider variety and doesn't appeal to emotions in the same sense. So keep that in mind. You absolutely want to appeal to emotion. So those are the three jumping off. And then the fourth is sort of a, I'll say caveat or an add-on in terms of how you're structuring your copy. And what I always say is speak to the genuine qualities of the home. Um, this is sort of like, you know, people go out and say, catch a fish. And then it's like, well, the fish is like this big and it's this big. And it's like, they, before you know, it, it's like, ah, I'm the biggest fish, right? And, and you don't ever want to play um, that chain. Your job as a professional, uh, as an agent is to make sure that you are uh, showing the property as it stands, and you can't be exaggerating a lot of stuff about the home. So make sure what you're putting in there is realistic. Um, so I did want to give that caveat. While I'm at it, I do want to give another caveat here in terms of writing property descriptions. There are a lot of fair housing considerations when it comes to writing property descriptions. And what I mean by that is, um, we can't include pieces of information in our property descriptions that specifically relate to any sort of protected class, including things like disability. And what I mean by that is um, I've seen things in property descriptions where people talk about walking trails, right? Needs to be nature trails instead of walking trails. Because walking, somebody might not be able to do that, and we need to be a we need to be sure that we are inclusive in what we're doing. So make sure that, as I said before, you're talking to the buyer's desires, and you're not actually talking to a specific buyer. You're not envisioning a perfect person in your head. You're envisioning a set of desires, a set of reasons people would want to be attracted to and use that home um, as the core to what you're doing. Now, I'm going to put this out in this video. Um, I am creating a class on how to write for inclusivity and get a better understanding of how to do that. Um, if that is something that you are interested in, I would love to know down in the comments below uh, as to, you know, taking that on directly and saying, how can we write in a more inclusive manner? And a lot of that, like I said, comes down to focusing on the desires of the buyer and not the buyer themselves specifically. So I just want to make sure I gave that caveat um, before we put it all together uh, and, you know, got you right into writing that property description. So <clears throat> you want to tell a story. You want to appeal to what senses you can. You want to use impact words that appeal to emotion. You definitely want to speak to the genuine qualities of the property itself and not exaggerate. You want to make sure you're including inclusive language in what you're doing as opposed to exclusive language. And then now we have all of this. It's time to actually put it together. And I want to leave you on a piece of advice that we use a ton um, when it comes to this, which is that you want to write the long version first and then cut it down. 
Um, most MLSs are anywhere between 150 and 500 words uh, as to what their cap is for what you can write for a property description. The challenge that we see people run into, though, is they're trying to write it at once, where they write everything down, but they're trying to write everything down and keep it within that 150 or keep it within that 500. And then they get writer's block and then stop. And, oh, what do I do now? What you need to do is write as much as you want to, right? It's just a page. Go on as long as you want to to keep it interesting and write your content and then come back and cut it down to the point that it's an actual property description that fits into the short form version um, that the MLSs display in various various locations. So that 150 to 500 words is really key because what you'll find is that when you write the long form version first, you'll be able to go back and say, well, the first sentence should be captivating whether it's in the short or the long form version. Okay, so let me take my first sentence and make sure that it works in both and you got that covered. And then you take a step forward and say, well, what are the most valuable um, and enticing sentences I have from this long form version? And then break that down and actually put that into and cut it and edit it down into your sub 150 to 500 word version, depending on your MLS. So that is a really, really key strategy when it comes to writing great property descriptions and making sure that you don't get stuck trying to cram a bunch of information into this short form version. Because the reality is you don't need to give them every piece of information in the description itself. Um, I think that's another thing that we see agents do a lot is they're like, oh, I need to cram every little piece into this short form description. What you need is to cram in enough information that it gets them to keep reading, to keep looking, to look at something else for the property. The short form description does not necessarily have to include every piece of detail. It needs to include the important details that get people to read more um, and to look up more and investigate more about that property um, that you're putting out online. Now, I want to leave you uh, with a positive note here because every agent has the opportunity to stand out with their property descriptions. And I think that's a really, really powerful thing. And what I mean by that is it doesn't matter if you've been in the industry 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, or a year. It doesn't, 10, 10 days. It doesn't matter how long you've been in the industry to be able to write a great property description. It doesn't matter how many clients you have. It doesn't matter how many listings you have in the market right now, what awards you've won. It really doesn't matter. What matters is implementing these strategies that we've talked about today to write a great property description that stands out from the rest. So that being said, I have total confidence that you can go do this and do an amazing job writing property descriptions um, and getting those homes sold in shorter amounts of time and for more money because of the property description that you are writing and you are putting out there to find the best buyers. Now, before we close this up today, um, I do want to mention, if you're watching this on YouTube, I would greatly, greatly appreciate the subscribe and the notification bell down below. Um, the, you'll get notifications whenever we put out more content and it hopefully will be super helpful to you. But dropping that subscribe and notification bell will be helpful to us and super helpful to us. So I thank you in advance. Beyond that, um, pretty much anywhere you're watching this, drop a like and a comment down below. Let us know what you think about this. Are these strategies you're already using? Were they helpful? Did you download the, the cheat sheet and you're using it for your brainstorming? Let us know uh, down below in the comments. We would absolutely love to hear from you and hear how this has helped you. All right. Well, uh, two things before we close up. One, don't forget to go over to agentinnercircle.com. Uh, go to the blog, which should be linked down in the description and get the download and get the cheat sheet for yourself. The second thing I want to mention um, before we close up today uh, is you're, you're going to get the download, right? But you're also 
can head over to our private Facebook group, um, Agent the Agent Inner Circle, or our Facebook page, um, and make sure you hit the like and you join over there because we are always putting out a ton of new content to help folks and giving away templates and downloads and all that sort of stuff. So definitely check out uh, agentinnercircle.com as well as our Facebook page and Facebook group. All right. Well, I think that about does it. Um, thank you to everybody for joining today. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, as always, best wishes for your success. This has been Alex Camilio, CEO of the Agent Inner Circle, signing off. Mm-hmm.